Good morning, and welcome back to Ask the Agronomist. I'm Laura Cunningham, filling in this week for Kyla on this frigid, frigid cold week. Yes, very cold this week, and still snowing again today. So it was. Yeah. Made the drive to work a little, a little yeah, uh, hairy, we, but we got to break some records. I don't know if we'd be proud of that or not. <laughs> you know, we were joking about that yesterday. We kind of thought maybe it was colder here than in Alaska, so of course we had to look it yeah. up. And uh, yesterday here it was negative 27. And in Anchorage, it was 33 above. So yes, we were colder <laughs> than Alaska, and they can take it back. Yeah, like 60 degrees. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so back to our topic this week. We're going to be covering the hybrid stress wheel research that Phil's been completing here at the Latham Farm. So Phil, why don't you start by talking about how you set this plot test up? Sure. So we don't have a perfect picture of it to visualize. There's one on the poster itself, you know, which you guys will have an opportunity to look at later. But uh, the stress wheel, if you just kind of think about a spoked wagon wheel, you know, think about anything with spokes, your old bicycle you had. Uh, so those hybrids are making up the spokes. So roughly we have two hybrids as two different, or one hybrid is two spokes, so that it's kind of replicated. And then we have uh, check hybrids as well throughout. Um, but this, this is hand planted. Um, we go out there with chains and stakes and hand planters. We put, you know, two seeds in the ground and then we actually come back, thin it out, um, so it's a, a lot of work to get this planted and in the ground, um, but it shows something that's very valuable. Uh, you know, something that a lot of times more, I, I would say, I guess plant breeders probably look at a lot of these characteristics, but it, it gives farmers the opportunity uh, to look at them as well. So, you know, things like uh, plant height as it changes with, with stress, you know, the idea behind this is looking at uh, the stress that we're putting to it. So. Anytime in agronomy, we, I always talk about G by E by M, you know, a lot of guys, they may not think of that right off the bat, but genetics by environment, by management, always is, is your, your factors that play into any issue in the field or anything that you're going to see. So we have different genetics, and then we're alternating the management. The environment, obviously, the weather is usually something we can't change a lot unless you have irrigation, but so we're changing that man management. We're pushing pops from 15,000 on the outside edge where they're about four and a half feet apart in terms of the rows, all the way to the center where they're at about 55,000 plants per acre. So, you know, looking at that ultra high population that we talk about a lot nowadays in terms of plant population and seeing how that impacts the plant height as you go towards the center, the plants, you know, begin to come, begin to grow taller because of that increased competition for sunlight and nutrients, you know, and even ear height. And then we look at uh, what this poster focuses on a lot is, uh, the ear type. So whether it's a, a flex versus <clears throat> a determinant ear. So in the past, you know, 50 years ago, more of the hybrids were more at one end of the spectrum or the other, which is kind of interesting to me. So we had more fixed or, or uh, determinant ears or uh, ones at the farther other end of the spectrum, a full flex. And nowadays we really don't have that many of those because it's higher risk situations. So we kind of have what we call semi-flex and semi-determinant. They kind of lay somewhere in the middle and, and flex and, and girth and length a little bit differently depending on the genetics. So it's a very, very unique uh, situation. Like I said, it takes a lot of effort and time to plant, uh, but we can learn a lot from it. And that's what this poster is kind of getting at. So. Interesting. So why don't you walk us through a little bit of what's shown on the poster here. What specifically were you measuring in the stress wheel plot? Sure. So if you kind of look at it, you see, first of all, ears lined up. So we had this uh, kind of a grid behind it. Uh, as you guys helped take pictures for me, we had uh, inch, each, each grid it represents one inch to kind of give a, a scale uh, when you're looking at those ears. So on the left side of, of any of those pictures, you can see that that's where we really, that's our high pop. So that's the close to 55,000 plants per acre. You see a lot of, in a lot of cases, um, we may even have really small ears in some of these. So when you really push the population, um, those, those semi-determinants a lot of times will end up really having a small, short, uh, you know, pop can or beer can ear a lot of times they call it, um, when they're really pushed to their max. Uh, but you got to think about it in another way too, that as you add 55,000 plants per acre, they may be small ears, but there's a lot more of them out there. There's roughly twice as much at 30,000 uh, compared to 55,000. So. You have double the ears out there. So those rows, the, the first one you're going to see the columns is the ear type, a semi-flex or semi-determinant typically. 
Um, then the next column is going to show the girth. So how big around, how many kernels around it is. We always talk about that in terms of how they flex. And then the length. So if they're flexing in length versus, versus girth, you're going to kind of see that uh, play out as you change from uh, you know, 55,000 on the left side to really low population, uh, you know, around 15,000 uh, on the low side. So what are some of the learnings that we can take away from this research now that we have all of the results? Yeah, so ideally, you know, my biggest thing with this is, you know, if guys come out to our field day, obviously we can't, uh, I can't travel and plant these, you know, one in every area. That's what I want to key in on is, number one, environment plays, just like I said at the beginning, a big role in how any hybrid, the genetics, respond in an environment. So. Ideally, we could have one of these in every different, you know, situation and, and environment that we have in Latham country. That's not physically possible. Uh, I can't travel and do that much work in the spring during planting season. But we can all still take a lot of information from this poster just by looking at the ears. So when, when you think about product placement, you know, something like uh, a 5137 over here, um, we can talk about you know, pushing the populations on that. So how does it respond in that kind of environment? Because typically we tell guys, okay, that's one that it needs to be pushed a little bit more, um, you know, just based on the flex that it has and the ear size, uh, we need to push it a little bit more to get that extra yield if guys are looking for it out of it. So, you know, obviously this is one environment, but we can still understand how the ear flexes uh, within that. You know, so population is, is one big thing, product placement, um, so when we look at, you know, population, um, you know, we have several good examples of that. You know, I would, I would focus in on the 4795 on uh, this one. There's a couple in this poster that obviously have a big difference in, uh, in the picture. You know, you can kind of see, wow, the ears get really small, that kind of thing. Um, but 4795 is one that doesn't need to be pushed, you know, and, and you can tell, you can see, you know, focus in on those areas in the middle where, wow, it's, it's holding its, its ear size really well. So pushing it uh, towards the higher pops really starts to uh, cut that ear down uh, and, and decrease your yield. So um, some great, you know, some great tips just on product placement and how it relates to ear size. You know, this is, ear, ear type is not the only thing that we use obviously for product placement. These, the, the beauty of the stress wheel, especially when you see it in the field, is, is seeing some of those height, height differences too. So if you're picking a hybrid for a, a silage, you know, it, out in the field, you can see as you get cl close to the inside of the wheel, how that competition for sunlight and things, how the leaf architecture really changes on those hybrids, you know, because there's a, there's a balance when it comes to silage and, and what you want in terms of characteristics. But the other thing for silage that guys can see from this, you know, we got the ear flex and stuff, but you also have, you can see that some of the grain quality and kernel depth. You know, that's important. That makes up a lot of that ear. You know, you can see on some of those ones that we have uh, better silage options for. Some of that kernel depth is just uh, really deep on something like a 5742, you know, or even down here at a uh, 5495. The kernel depth is really strong versus some of the other ones that may be more top end yield, maybe, you know, more of a racehorse kind of hybrid. They may not have the kernel depth, the kernel quality that um, some of these other silage options that we have. Uh, do. So just a lot of things that you can learn from it. Uh, the biggest thing I would say is, you know, understand that this is one environment. It shows you a great representation, how they all fit together. And, and see, you just never see this many hybrids side by side. So that's the neat part about a stress wheel. Um, it was developed, I can't remember, probably 15 years ago, I, I believe, uh, university started doing it and uh, kind of doing it just to evaluate those characteristics. So it's, it's a great opportunity for us to be able to show it to customers and use that information to, to pass along to them. So they're placing and you know, setting you know, their planners. Um, it, it gives them some good keys to remember on, on how to really dial in their, their placement. So. Very interesting. So if there's anybody that's interested in, in really looking over these results, we'll try to post a picture of, of this poster underneath, underneath the video. And some things to remember, like Phil said, your higher populations are going to be on the left, lower populations on the right, same thing with these pictures of, of the ears, and um, in the, the photos of the full ears, your scale is an inch, so that'll help you kind of determine how long those ears really were in real life. So 
Thanks for sharing this with us tonight. It's very yeah. interesting, Phil. Is there anything you want to add before we wrap up? No, no, I, I think it kind of speaks for itself. You know, a picture's worth a thousand words. That's why we started doing this, and, and, and I hope in the future we'll continue to do it. Like I said, it's going to be hard to do more than one of these uh, just based on the amount of time and effort it takes us, you know, the guys, the manpower that it takes to do it out in the field. But, um, you know, if anybody has any more interest, you know, or specific hybrids or something they want to see in there, we pick try to pick the you know the best representation we have for maturity you know in this in this region for our hybrids so we try to get as many as we can you know it holds around 38 total hybrids with the checks in there so um, you know we do our best but uh, obviously it's we can't do everything for everyone so all right well thank you everyone for joining us today if you have some questions you can always shoot them over to us on social media or visit us online at latehamseeds.com